that you learn to hear his voice, have fellowship with him, and not just overly in church. And I get to the end of here, I'll give you a testimony if we have time about how you can use the Holy Spirit in your everyday life. I mean, he's, he's spiritual, but he also caters to the needs of our flesh. Now, in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8, the prophet speaks from God and he says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, a lot of people have read that, and a lot of people have taught this, that, that we are ignorant concerning God's wills, his will, because his thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts. And so we, we can't understand, you know, that's where you get this stuff, God moves in mysterious ways. Why? Because his thoughts are not our thoughts. But, you know, and I was reading this, and I'm thinking, well, how can that be? If we can't hear his thoughts, then how is he going to communicate to us? And so I did a study on this one day, and the Lord says, he impressed upon me to back up and read the previous verse in verse 7. In verse 7, it says, Let the wicked forsake his ways, the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. So when he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, he's not talking to the righteous. He's talking to the wicked and the sinner. And so you can hear God's thoughts. I guarantee and promise you that you have heard God. Now, you might not have understood him, but if you will continue to press in, and I'll show you how to do that here in a little bit, that you can hear God's voice all the time. And, you know, I, I just, it's so, it, it becomes second nature. It's just like if I wanted to talk to Bud, him and I could just strike up a conversation. I don't have to fast and pray and, and, and get on clean clothes and get into a special place. We can just start talking. You know, and that's why the Holy Ghost is. He, you just start talking. And a lot of times he'll initiate the conversation. And you know exactly who it is. It's not a mystery. Praise God. So if you believe that, um, that you will never hear God's thoughts, then you're never going to hear from the Holy Spirit. So that scripture has been misapplied to the body of Christ. Now come down to uh, verse 12. He says, now that you understand that the righteous are going to hear my voice, then those who hear my voice, you'll go out with joy and be led forth with peace. You'll be led forth by peace or with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you and the singing and all the trees in the field shall clap their hands. When you begin to follow the Lord, all of creation will bow down to you when you speak to it. You know, we have dominion over the fishes of the sea and all these kind of things. Well, once the Lord begins to lead you, then the trees of the earth and all this stuff will clap their hands. In other words, they'll begin to recognize your dominion and authority because it doesn't come from you. It comes from the spirit in you. So we're going to be led forth with peace. I go, and you can tell, and Joe McCroskey will tell you the same thing and everybody else. I'm led more by the peace of God in me than his voice. If I'm supposed to, like I, uh, I was praying this, you know, just during praise and worship on Sunday, and the Lord impressed upon me that it's time to go over to 180. And, and I thought, okay, but Lord, what am I going to do there? And then he just showed me what we're supposed to do, and it started coming together. And I told man, I asked Mandy, would like to come over to what she says, oh, Dad, it's time. She says, we, the kids like that, and, and it's all put together. I had peace about that. Amen. Because we're, we're to be led forth with peace. Now, Remember, I've shared this with you. Peace is not the absence of problems. It's the presence of the Lord. And so you're led forth by his presence. If, if, you, have the Holy, if you have the Holy Spirit in you and you get around something, you know, the Holy Spirit is more sensitive than we are. And it begins to, it begins to uh, quench that peace. Then you know not to go any further in that direction. Amen. But on the other hand, if you're if you're looking to do something and there's a, that peace in you, it gets to manifest and you know that's the right way. Praise God. So peace were to be led forth with peace. You will be led forth by the peace of God and the witness of the Holy Spirit, which is almost the same thing. 
then then you will actually hear his voice. And I'll look at, and I'll share something when I get to the end of here. Now let me share something with you. Uh, Joe McCroskey called me this morning, and he said, um, he said, now when the Lord told you to call the church together on that Sunday and have that fast and break that demon, that spirit of cancer over the church, well, how did you, did you share scripture? And I says, well, Joe, I prayed about it and the Lord gave me the scriptures that we were standing on and other people, Lord began to give them scriptures. And so it became a family meeting and we did it. He says, okay. He says, that's, um, thank you for sharing that with me. He said, there's a, a pastor, they, they oversee a church in Australia and they have aborigines in their church. And aborigines are just like the Indians on the reservations and, and the black folk in, in, the, in the poor precepts or precincts. And uh, suicide is rampant. And, there was, and uh, there was a 10 year old girl in their church committed suicide. And so that church knows it's a, de a demonic attack. And so Joe was telling them what we did. And so they were, Joe was just telling us, okay, not, uh, I thank you for sharing that with me. I'll, I'll send them an email to Australia and just tell them what we did. But you always can't, you can't always do what somebody else does. You've got to do what God tells you to do. Praise God. But it's okay. You know, I hear people do things and, and I hear the Lord said, you can do that too. And then we'll do it. But other things I'll hear people, we should do that. And I don't, the Lord says, no, you shouldn't. So, but that there's that peace always, uh, if you, if you get used to the peace and you dwell with the peace of God, which is his presence, then you will know right away if something tries to take that peace away from you. You know, they, when they, you know how they train bankers to identify counterfeit money? Yeah. They, they keep showing them the real thing. So if a counterfeit shows up, they can identify it. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, are you with me okay so far? Pretty good? Yeah. All right, then let's go to John's Gospel, chapter 16, and verse 32. John 16 and 32. Behold the hour, this is Jesus speaking, it's in red. Behold the hour is coming and is now come, that you shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, <clears throat> that in me you might have peace. In the world you're going to have tribulation. Yes, I know you're a Christian. Yes, I know God's inside of you. But you're still going to have tribulation. Why? Because there's still a devil outlaw loose in this world. Then he says, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world or I've overcome that portion of tribulation that's going to attempt to come into your life. So we will always face problems. And you know, I started to deal with all the problems I faced with. I, I, took, my, I took the teachings on the, the um, authority of the believer, and I began to speak to the devil and establish a relationship with him. He knows where I stand, and I know where he kneels. And I put the devil in his place, and so... Uh, a lot of my problems, you know, was me yielding to the flesh and things, and I got rid of most of them. But then I found when you become a Christian, sometimes you have to deal with other people's problems. And, it's, and, it, it, that's, and if you've got to learn how to deal with your own first before you can help them. It's like in the airplane. I always give you the little spiel on what to do in case the oxygen depletes. Put the mask on somebody else first and then put your own on. <laughs> Amen. And so you're always going to have tribulation. And if not your own, you're going to have problems. Remember what Joel McCroskey taught us. He said, you get up in the morning and the devil's not bothering you. That means he's bothering somebody. Go pick a fight with him. You know, people, oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to stir up the devil. I'm in no condition to antagonize anybody. But Jesus says we will take up serpents and snakes. That means we go after him. Don't, and, and we have peace doing it. Glory to God. So we will always have peace even in the middle of tribulation. Amen? You can, you know, I remember I told you when Joan McCroskey and I were in Tanzania, uh, Kilimanjaro Airport, and we're getting to fly out of there to South Africa and then do some meetings there and come back to the States. And we're sitting in the airport and Joe says, uh-oh. And he went up there and they says, 
the airline that was going to fly you guys out just went out of business. So you're stuck here for four days. That's when the next, and we don't know if we can get you on that plane. And Joe says, Jerry, you want the luggage? And he went in, and I just started praying. I, you know, I, and I wasn't upset. I wasn't scared. I didn't freak out. And I just started praying. And here come this lady. She was an ambassador from England. And she was, and she come out, and she was saying some very naughty words. Even though she had an English accent, they still come out the same. She was dropping the F-bomb and everything else. And she was cursing the Africans and their airlines. And she went slamming out of that airport. And then Joe come out right behind her just a few minutes later. And he says, they're sending the plane for us. <laughs> so she had to drive from Tanzania to Nairobi, about an eight or ten hour drive over the rough roads in an old truck and a bus they have and it's full of outlaws and lions and tigers and Joe and I are on this little airplane flying to Nairobi. It took us an hour. <laughs> but so even in the middle of tribulation, you need to learn to tap into that peace. Lord, what do I do? Because whatever he tells you to do is going to give you peace. Amen. Praise God. So um, if, if we're in him, we're in his will, we will always have his peace. Praise God. I told you about, I went to this, this minister came to town and he was really charismatic and he was starting a church and everybody was going there from our church and they said, oh, you've got to go hear this guy. He's so wonderful. He jumps up on chairs. He prophesies. <laughs> so I went and I listened and I didn't hear anything bad about, I didn't hear anything bad that he preached, but I had no peace in my spirit. And I thought, what is going on? I did not hear anything contrary to the word but I have no peace. I said, Lord, what's going on? And the Lord just says, phony, phony. And I thought, well, praise God. And, and so I trusted what the Lord spoke to me and I left and he wanted me to hook up with him and do all these things. And, and it wasn't more than a few months later, he got ran out of town as a charlatan. And, but you gotta, you can't go by what you see. And I had young people in the church that, oh, this guy is so wonderful because he jumps up on chairs. You know, if I could build a church by jumping up on chairs, I would do it. But I'd get old chairs because we, we have pretty good chairs. <sighs> Praise God. All right, now let's go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, our Lord Jesus. Now, there's two applications of peace. There's peace with God and the peace of God. Now, it's not a deal where you choose one or the other. You get them both. When you receive Jesus, you've made peace with God. He, you're no longer under condemnation. You're no longer part of the world. You're of the family of God. Your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. And your eternity and your destiny has already been planned out. You've got it made. And that's why Paul said, to die is gain. <laughs> then there's a the peace um, with God or of God where we, we tap into that peace and that's how he leads us. Peace is a part of our salvation packet. And when you have peace, there's no inner conflict. My um, uncles used to tell me all the time that I was a very nervous kid. I was, I'd chew my fingernails and I was running all the time. And they, 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 I bugged them <laughs> like that. And I just didn't have that, you know, I, I just, that's probably normal in all kids. And when you grow up, then you become a worrier and you grow ulcers. But before they could begin to, before I could begin to grow in some ulcers, I met Jesus and I began to put my trust in him. Now, I, I would like, I wish I could tell you, you could do this on one Bible study or one, or one Sunday sermon, but it, it comes from hearing and hearing and hearing the word. The more you hear the word, the more opportunity you give the Holy Spirit to impart that peace into your heart and the faith. Praise God. That's why, you know, I'm always, you know, people, man, pastors are always after us because we're not in church. Well, you, you need to hear the word, and that's what you go to church for. You don't go to church out of religious tradition. It's to hear the word. 
What the purpose of church is coming to get edified and to be in, in the presence of people who believe just like you do, precious faith. These, look around here, see all these strange people? Those are your brothers and sisters. Hello. <laughs> all right, now we're not having a family reunion. Praise God. But these are your families and sisters. You know, you know, Jesus was in preaching in his house. His mother and his brother and sister were outside. He says, send Jesus out. We want to talk to him. They wouldn't even go in there and listen to him. And what did he say? He says, who is my brother and sister? But those who have the word, hear my words. Those are my brothers and sisters. You're hearing from Jesus. I'm hearing from Jesus. We can folk. Amen. Praise God. And we don't have feuds because father would not tolerate it. Praise God. Amen. All right, let's go to Philippians chapter four. Once again, I cannot emphasize enough to move it in the gifts of the spirit, how important it is that we have that ongoing personal contact relationship with the Holy Spirit. Just talking to him. You know, I, I got up this morning and just started talking to him. I had this, I had my message tonight. I had ready yesterday and so when I'm praying this morning, the Lord gave me the word for Sunday. <laughs> and, then, and then Sunday, he gave me the word for Wednesday. And I'm thinking, you know what? I'm a day ahead. And so I asked the pastor if I could play hooky on Friday. And he says, sure, you've been working hard, son. All right, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, be careful for nothing. That's a Montana uh, translation for nothing. We say, oh, nothing. I ask, what are you guys doing? Nothing. So be careful for nothing. In other words, don't worry or fret for anything. But in everything, in every, every situation you have to deal with, pray. Be in prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And, and the peace of God, which passes understanding, which, you, which is so amazing, you can't even figure it out. How in the world do people go through the things they go through and they have peace? And, and, and he says, so the peace of passing understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So he says, he's, he's telling us three things here. We're all in the world. We're going to have tribulation. Don't fret. Don't worry. The, and I'm going to ask you a really simple question. And if, I've been, all of us in here have worried at one time or another, some more than others. Has worry ever changed your situation? Not one bit, has it? I tried it. It don't work. I have a friend that is a silent worrier. He worries about everything and he keeps it in. And every time him and I would go hunting, we'd get up on the trail and start to walk. And he'd be back there throwing up. Rah! And he did this every single morning. I wait for him, look around, he'd show up, he says, I'm ready. And he did it every morning. He was worried about, and we'd split up and we'd go hunting. And he went to the doctor. The doctor said he had an ulcer because <laughs> he worries about everything. And when we're together, he's always, now don't do this. He's so worried. And you can't, I can't correct him because he's 6'4 and weighs 327. <laughs> he's a big guy. <laughs> and he's my friend. So he says, don't worry. He says, yeah, you're going to have tribulation in this world. Don't worry about it. Don't fret. That ain't going to help you. Here's, here's what you should do. Pray. Pray. And then thank me. Because when you pray, you take my word and pray. You know I hear you. Thank me because I'm going to take care of it. And if, well, that's easy for you to say, brother. Of course it is. Because I've been studying Jesus for a long time. And I put my full trust in him. I'm trusting in him to get me to heaven. And, I, and I, I did what he told me to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now this is, this is really getting fun. Okay, he says, now when you do this, when you, when you don't worry, you pray, and you, and, you give, and you thank him when you pray, then his peace will come into your life, and it says, well, keep your heart. It will guard you or protect you from inner conflict. Because I think by now you know the devil's always going to whisper in your ear and get you to expect the worst. See, fear expects the worst. Faith expects the best. 
And so the devil's constantly trying to throw a curve at you, trying to get you to take the care of something. Because if you start worrying and take the care of something, you're no longer in faith. Amen. And so, you know, just tell the devil, devil, this is not my care. I told you about the time that I stood against that sickness that was pneumonia, the flu, tonsillitis, sore throat, uh, every, you, pneumonia, yeah, I had everything. I had a, had a registered nurse come out. She was going to call an ambulance. I said, no. And I was hurting. And she said, Jerry, there's guys in the hospital dying from this. You're going to go to, I said, no, I'm not. And she said, what are you taking for this? And I showed her my tapes on healing. And she said, what is this? I said, these tapes by Kenneth Copeland, I put them on and he preaches healing to me. And she said, what? How's that helping you? He said, well, the word is medicine to my flesh. And she says, you're weird. She says, you better go to the doctor. And so she left. But see, I, I had a peace in my heart. I knew that I knew that I knew Jesus was healing me. I just knew it. And, and, you know, and, every, and I was so sick, I could hardly rebuke the devil. But I was, devil, get away from me. Jesus name. And once in a while, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. The devil, that doesn't sound like praise. God takes it as praise, devil. And I'll never forget at the third day when that stuff lifted, I was healed. I went into the mirror and, and I was washing up and I heard this voice and say, Jerry, why don't you go ahead and admit I got you this time and next time you'll probably win. And I heard that. That's the devil. And I says, devil, get out of here in Jesus name. And he just... I didn't even have to use a name because I've been standing on it for three days. Praise God. So that peace, it kept me through that. Now, if the doctor would have said, if the Lord would have said, go see a doctor, I'd have went. But I, but I, my faith was at a place where I knew I could stand against this thing. Amen. And I have nothing against doctors. I'll go if the Lord tells me. But if there's things he, he'll tell me. If I'm going to heal you of this. When he says that, I don't need to go to a doctor. So God will lead us with his peace more than anything. That peace in us. Do you have peace about doing this? If, if you don't, then don't do it. You know, when Joe flies overseas, he's Jerry, I never get on an airplane unless I have peace. And you know, I, and I, I said, Joe, we're going overseas. I'm not getting on a plane unless, he said, either am I. And we had peace all the way and I was just amazed. It was just, everything is so smooth, praise God. Okay, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Let me, let me read this to you out of the Amplified Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. Paul says, now when I arrived at Troas to preach the good news, the gospel of Christ, a door of opportunity was opened for me in the Lord. Yet my spirit could not rest, it could not relax, get relief, because I did not find my brother Titus there, so I took leave of them and departed from Macedonia. So Paul was led to Troas, but he had no peace there because Titus wasn't there. Now, for some reason, Titus was supposed to be there. And Paul says, there's something wrong here. And, and uh, I, I, can't, I can't do what I'm called to do here until I have made contact with Titus because he's out on a missionary trip. And uh, he's, I have no peace in my spirit until I go find my friend Titus to find out what's going on. For, for, for some reason, Paul had to unite with him for some reason. He, there, and I, I, I think I might have found it in the scriptures, but he had to connect with Titus for some reason. You know, and I know that sometimes the Lord will tell you to do something, and and it, but there's an element or another part of that uh, commitment that He's given you that has to be present. You know, if you ever watch Joel, whenever we're together, when he preaches, he'll say, "Now, Jerry, be sensitive, be sensitive," because he wants me to get up and flow in the gifts of the Spirit with him. And uh, you know, we were over in Hamilton, and and he did that. And, I got up and, and uh, he says, you got anything? And I says, yeah. And, and I, I, I shared a scripture with the people about coming together, how when everybody pulls together, and I can't remember the scripture right now, I think it was in Mark 16, these signs shall follow those who believe. And so I shared it with the people and the Lord, that's what the Lord told me to do. And then, then we started moving in the gifts of the spirit. 
<clears throat> and it was really cool because the, 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 the head of that church who was in the, his, his son and daughter were running, they were the pastors. They were out in the evangelistic field. He came up and he says, would you lay your hands on me and impart that gift into me? I said, sure. And so I did that. This little girl walked, came up and her mother brought this little girl up and he says, uh, she said, do you, have, do you have a word for my daughter? And I says, I don't think so. And I, but I'll pray for you. So, okay. So I laid my hands on this little girl and I started praying and the word of the Lord came to me and I gave her a word and she just, she was just laughing and smiling. Thank you so much. That, that's what the God told me to. <laughs> that is so fun. Man, that's, that's better than bowling, better than uh, golf. Almost as good as shooting trap. No, it's better than trap. So anyway, Paul, there was something missing from what God told him to do. He had to make a contact with Titus. We'll go ahead to the seventh chapter and verse four. In, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter seven and verse four. Now listen to Paul says, great is my boldness of speech towards you. So he did minister to those people. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I'm exceeding joyful at our tribulation. For when we were come unto Macedonia, Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, no peace, but we were troubled on every side without were fightings and within were fears. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. So the Lord brought a reunion and he brought Titus into Paul because Titus needed to be there. And I'm not certain the reason. I, I read in there and I couldn't find it. I'm, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. But Paul needed Titus and he had to re come and report of what was going on uh, with the other people. Praise God. You know, it's just like uh, next week. I'm impressed in my spirit. Bud needs to be over at 180. Somebody needs to go get him. Amen. If, if not, we'll send a cattle car or something to make sure he gets there. I know what he's supposed to do. Praise God. And all Bud has to do is come over there and relax and, and be a recipient of the Holy Spirit. Well, just watch what happens. I didn't even tell Mandy. Amen. Because tell Mandy, everybody will know. So. And, and, and you remember that. I make, that make light of that. But if God tells you to do something, don't be in a hurry to run and tell people. Because you know what? That's when the devil finds out what God said. Praise God. So I just know I, I have a direction with the Lord. And so I have peace about that. I'm, I'm excited about next Wednesday. I can't wait for Sunday. You know, praise God. I already know what my assignment is. So Paul was comforted. Peace was restored when, when Titus was brought back. Okay. Now let's go to uh, 1 John. Let's go back to 1 John. And chapter 5, 1 John and chapter 5 and verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus, the anointed one, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. For there are, uh, well, okay, let me just comment on that. Jesus came, when it says by water, it's talking about being his baptism there in the water. That's when his anointing came. And then he came by blood, which is talking about the sacrifice at the, at the cross. Amen. So Jesus was baptized by John and, and he received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then he shed his blood at the cross of Calvary. Okay. Now verse seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The father, the word, which is Jesus. The word was made flesh. That's Jesus. And the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now remember, there's only one God. But God can manifest as a Father, the Son, or the Spirit. I mean, and so the, the, the Trinity is not that hard to understand. Okay, so those three bear record in heaven. And these three that bear witness in the earth, the Holy Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. So now, the Holy Spirit gives man the witness of the life of Christ. No man can convince you of the reality of Christ. No man can do it. Amen. You know, people can tell you about Jesus, but it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to witness that to you. Amen. Because if man 
Barbara Schmehe used to always say this, if something is a preference, you can be talked out of it. But if it's a uh, conviction, then nobody can talk you out of it. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings conviction. And so the more you read your Bible, the more you pray and the more you read the word, the more opportunity you give the Holy Spirit to confirm that word in your heart. You know, you, you, you look at these people that the martyrs and what they went through, you know, those was it 21 martyrs there. In, I think it was in Libya, the Christians where the ISIS cut their heads off. And they, they just take, they just put them down there and start cutting. And all they had to do was denounce their faith and they wouldn't do it. Where it was in, I think it was in Paris when those terrorists attacked that nightclub, they had those people lined up. And I think it was, I think it was, I think it was there in California. I, I lose track of all the terrorist events. I guess I don't keep that good of tabs on them. But the terrorists said, are you, are you Christian or are you Muslim? And if you said, if you said Muslim, or if you, if you were, or something like, no, are you Jew or Christian? And if you said Jew, they shot you in the head. If you said you were a Christian, they shot you in the knee. So membership has its privileges. You know? But they would, but the, those people cannot deny them. And you see these people and you read these accounts where all they have to do is say no and they'll go free, but they won't do it. What's happened? The Holy Spirit has embedded that revelation in us. We can't deny Christ. Amen. Not even in jesting. You can't do it because the Holy Spirit has imprinted that revelation into our hearts. So now, so the Holy Spirit gives us the witness of the life of Christ. In verse 9, if we receive the witness of men, in other words, if we believe what men tell us, well, the witness of God is greater than men. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. So God can convince you uh, more deeper than any man can. I say, I cannot convince you of the reality of Christ. I can give you the information, but you're going to have to yield to the Holy Spirit. Praise God. You know, I told you that once after I got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and healed, for a year after that, I, I, the devil would come. I didn't know it was the devil, but he would come and tell me. He said, you know, I get this thought. You know, you're not really saved. Because you haven't done anything. You can't just pray and get saved. And I said, yeah, you're probably... And that was the devil, and I didn't know that. And so I'd call Barbara, and I'd tell her, and, and she'd say, Jerry, do you, did you get new shoes last week? Did you tell me? I says, yeah. Where'd you get them from? I says, uh, Capital Sports. Take them back down there and pay for them again. I says, what? She, I said, what do you mean? She says, well, that's what you want. That's what you're trying to get God to do. He paid for your sins, and now you don't believe it, so you want him to pay again. And so you, she used that illustration to get through to me, and I, I didn't realize it was the devil trying to use my own thoughts to get me to not believe the word. And so what I kept doing, I just kept going to Bible studies. I kept praying. I kept listening to tapes, and the witness of the Holy Spirit drove those thoughts out. You know, this is some really good preaching. And I'm not even preaching. I'm just teaching. That just came up in my spirit. Praise God. You, we have to be convinced of God's love towards us and what he wants to do, or you'll never possess it. And that's the purpose of church is to convince. I love Jerry Seville's uh, mission statement or his, his vision for the, he says, my vision is to go around the world and talk people into winning. I love that. That is a, I, I, that is a really good vision. So and look at verse 10. He that believes on the Son of God has the witness in himself. So you don't have to go get it. When you receive Jesus, the witness, the Holy Spirit came into your life. He's there to convince you of the word of God. So, um, if we have the inward witness, then he's going to use the gift of peace to lead us and to guide us. And, and he that believes not God hath made him a liar because he believes not the record that God gave his son. So when you receive Jesus, you have that witness. Now, I want to share something with you before we uh, close. I want to show you an illustration. I always like to, and I didn't go do this to get an illustration. I just 
I just like to be able to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Last Saturday, well, Friday, that last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, there was a gun show at the, at the fairgrounds. And I went out there, and I'm kind of looking for uh, a pistol to put in my truck. I always like to carry a pistol when I go in the mountains. I do not buy guns with the intent of shooting people, so just relax. But I wanted, this, I wanted a, a, a pistol, preferably a revolver, and I didn't want to pay a whole bunch and stuff. And so I, I was just looking. And I went by this table, and there was a little pistol sitting there, a really nice little 44 Special. It was lightweight frame. It was just like new. And the guy had a price on it, and I'm looking at it. And I'm looking at it. He said, you interested in that gun? I says, I don't know. And I set it down, and I went through the whole gun show. And, and, I, and I started thinking, Lord, what about that gun? I, I, you think that would be the one I'm looking for? Is, is there any reason I should not buy that? And I just check it in with my witness. And I left. And I thought, you know, I don't have peace, but I don't have anything going against my peace. And I thought, no, I am going to buy it until, you, until I hear from you, Lord. And so I just prayed and rolled the care but over onto him, thanked him, and went home. I went home and I think, I was thinking about it once in a while. When a thought came up, I thought, what should I do about that gun, Lord? Is that the one I'm looking for? And so the next day I thought, you know what, Lord, I'm going to go back to that gun show. I'm going to make a guy an offer in that gun. And I'm going to see if he'll sell it to me. And I'm praying for favor. So I went to the gun show, went in there, and it's six bucks a day to get in that cheesy gun show. It's ridiculous. You go to Bozeman, this one, it's five bucks for the whole weekend. This is six bucks a day. And it's a small little ratty gun show. So I went in there and I talked to the lady who runs it. And I says, you know, I was here yesterday. And I was talking to this guy about a gun. I'd like to go talk to him. And she says, yeah, go ahead. So I thank you for the favor. So I says, I'm still interested in this gun. And so I got him down a little bit, and I says, okay, I'll take it. I had peace about that. And then I went over to the lady, and I says, you know, I, I just bought this gun from this guy. She says, okay. And I says, there's a holster over there. She says, yeah, go ahead. So I didn't have to pay the $6. So I went over there, and I, I'm praying for favor. So I had favor with the guy who sold it again. I had favor with the lady who runs the gun show. And so I went over there, and I says, you got a holster for this pistol? He says, you know, I think I do. And he goes through all these holsters. He says, try this one. And man, that just like it was made for it. It slipped right in there so perfect. And it's a good brand too, made in the USA, not made in China. And I says, what do you take for this holster? He says, oh, give me 10 bucks. I says, I can do that. So, and I, and so I got that. And I, I was watching my piece inside. Do I do this or not? He said, well, you come on, you can't use God to go buy a gun. I did it. So I get the gun, and I go home, and of course, Joe calls. He says, what you doing? I said, you go to the gun show? And I says, yeah. He said, you buy anything? And I says, yeah, Joe, I got a revolver. And he says, he told him, if I take a picture and send it to me. So I took the picture and sent it to me. He takes back, he says, you got a good buy. He said, that's the new modern one. They got the airweight frame. He said, those things are accurate. They're reliable. And he says, you, you got a really good deal. Praise God. So all I'm sharing with you is this, that you can use that peace in your own personal affairs or in the church or running your whole life. What is God telling you? You know, you've heard Joe talk, tell us before he, he paid $3 for a, a jar or something like that and sold it for 100 He does that stuff all the time. Praise God. All right, here's our last scripture for the night. It's back in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1. 1 John 1 and 1. John says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. So John is testifying how they not only seen Jesus, but they had their hands on him. And he had his hands on them. He says, we had a very close, intimate, personal relationship with him. Verse 2, for the life was manifested and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that, he, that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. The Father gave Jesus eternal life and Jesus gave it to the disciples. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So the apostles were more than eyewitnesses. They had fellowship with Jesus. 
Amen. They had fellowship with him. And they were close to him. Remember when Peter and John healed that guy at the gate beautiful and the Jewish leaders had a fit and they, were, they went and attacked him. But, they, but then they took stock of them. He says, because these were ignorant and unlearned men, but they had been with Jesus. That makes a difference. Your education means nothing compared to your fellowship with the Lord. You know, you've, I think you've heard years ago about Oop Schroner that was Jerry Seville's ministry. Never went to school, never couldn't read or write. And, but he knew God. And uh, one of the stories was he needed, a, he needed a, a, an engine for a caterpillar. And he said, Lord, where am I going to get an engine for this caterpillar? Because he would, he would plow up all the brush in Texas. And the Lord says, go to the junkyard. So he goes to the junkyard. He said, Lord, I don't see the engine I need. He said, it's underneath that heap of steel. And so he goes over to the operator and he says, uh, you all have a Caterpillar engine I need. He says, well, I didn't, we do. Where is it at? He says, it's under this pile. He says, we'd have to move this whole pile. He says, yep. He said, you sure? He says, yep, God told me there was, a, he says, God. He says, yep, God told me. He says, we got to see this. So they moved that whole pile. It took several hours. And at the bottom of it, there was a Caterpillar engine. <laughs> and he got it. And those people never doubted him after that. Oop Schroner was an amazing guy. Praise God. And he, he never had, he never went to school. He couldn't read or write. And one day the Lord says, sit down. I want to talk to you and get, he's, get your Bible. He says, Lord, you know I can't read. He says, now you can, but you will in a minute. And he began to read the Bible. And he, the only thing he could read was the Bible. He couldn't read anything else. <laughs> Joe met this guy. He said he, and but he's an ignorant and unlearned man, but he's been with Jesus. And that's what makes the difference. Who cares about your education? Who cares what country you come from? Even if it's Poland, who cares? <laughs> who cares what, where, you, where your background is? So how do you get to know somebody? How do you get to know someone? Fellowship. You talk to them. Praise God. How do you get to know anybody? Just sit down and talk with them. And it, uh, it, fellowship is when two parties exchange thoughts. And you can do the same thing with the Holy Spirit. You know, you start, I just say, Lord, I just say, Lord, what about this? And I just start asking him questions and then sit back and let him teach me. Praise God. Now, sometimes I asked him, I says, I asked him one time, I asked him a question and I, I started praying and I prayed and prayed and prayed. I prayed for two or three hours and I says, Lord, and then all of a sudden I stopped and he gave me the answer and I thought, oh my Lord, that is so good. Thank you, Lord. And that became a message. And I said, Lord, how come you took so long to answer my question? He said, ah, I was just enjoying your fellowship. <laughs> and, and what I found is that people wanting to hear from the Lord will sit there and pray and pray and pray, but you got to stop and listen. <laughs> you got to get quiet. What does, what does he say? Just let your mind go. And say, Lord, Lord, what do you want to say? Praise God. And it's, it's so easy. You know, it, becomes, it becomes easier and easier as the time goes by. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now I want to, we'll, uh, we'll pray and, and then uh, we'll take, if anybody wants to make comments or questions, but while we're on tape here. Father, I, I thank you so much for the honor and the privilege to be able to stand before your people and build them up. And to bring them to that place where you want us to be, Lord, and that it's that close, intimate place with you where our, we share thoughts that you, when we listen to the witness of the Holy Spirit and that we become in tune with you and receive the witness that the Holy Spirit has been sent in the earth to bring us. And so, Father, I thank you for the honor and the privilege, and I'm praying that the people will desire spiritual gifts. And when the occasion arises, they will rely on you to minister to people. And I thank you for it, Father, and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.